Asia, Dukes of the Orient, and the Rock Pack, which currently features Tony Lewis of the Outfield, Steve Argeri of Journey, and Lou Graham of Foreigner. And this guy, he is busy. John Payne, the current king of prog rock. Thank you so much, John, for taking a minute to say hello to everybody. How are you? I'm good, Kiki. Um, been a while since uh, we've seen you, but um, hopefully we get to see you very soon. Very soon. Very, very soon. Now, I have to say the first question, how are all of the animals? The, uh, the zoo here is, is pretty good. <laughs> I think since I last saw you, we got another cat. And then uh, we picked up uh, another um, iguana. And all the iguanas live outside in an enclosure now, not in a small class case. So every, everyone's happy. The parrot's happy. The dogs, the cats, the fish. I think, I think I'm up to about 50 animals now. I was just going to ask you how many. Yeah, I think it's 50. About 20 uh, furry and lizard things and about 30 uh, uh, koi carp. Now, like, is there ever a minute where something pops up and you're like, oh, my gosh, I didn't even know I had that animal? Um, yes, funny enough, today. <laughs> um, we, we had some bullfrog tadpoles and in, in, the, in the koi pond, and they all hatched, and then we were feeding them, and then uh, the, the koi pond's inside the aviary. So uh, all the frogs died. Aww. And then um, this morning, uh, so they died before Christmas. Mm. Uh, I disappeared, disappeared or got out or whatever. And then this morning, uh, I was taking a picture of the lizards and then the bottom of the picture, look at the picture again, there's a bullfrog in it. <laughs> so Surprise! at least one survived. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's cool. Yeah. You love your Freddy's animals. alive. Well, that's it. right. And, and you guys love your animals. Now, when you travel, because you do travel a lot, who takes care of, I mean, who can you trust to take care of everybody? So, um, uh, our, our, our drummer Johnny Fedovich, uh, who's in who's in all the many variations of Asia FJP and and the Rock Pack. His his girlfriend looks after some of the dogs. We have a full size recording studio at home, and my recording uh, maintenance uh, guy at the studio, he's a big animal lover. So he actually comes with his cat. Oh, nice. And stays at our house a few days at a time. So he's feeding them. And then I've got another uh, guy and his, and his wife who live in the same uh, gated area. And in fact, he's the guitarist in, in Donnie and Marie. Stop it. Uh, on the strip in Vegas. <laughs> so he, they're big animal lovers. So they come and So I've got plenty of people that, that help out. But, you know, they're like my kids, you know. Oh, Absolutely. I mean, you can't have that many animals and not love them. I mean, just like family. Well, yeah. And, and like our, our house is, is just a zoo, really. It's a zoo recording studio and we live here. So that's probably <laughs> in, the right, in the right order. Well, I think maybe the animals probably take over sometimes, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, John. I'm, t- I'm tracking at the moment for the new Dukes, Dukes of the Orient album and... Uh, I try and leave the parrot out in in the live area of the studio for as long as I can, but uh, I've had to edit out parrot squawks and uh, and talking and stuff in the background. Now, does the Um, parrot ever swear while you're recording or? Luckily, so far, it doesn't. Oh, good. Being being in an English, half English household, half English, half American like (laughs) foreigner, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, um, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, that uh, the, the language is pretty good at the moment. I had an African grey long, long time ago, and his language was pretty bad. But uh, <laughs> this, one's, this one's actually pretty, pretty, pretty nice with its, its, uh, its vocabulary. A polite parrot. We like it. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, John, tons has happened since you left Asia in 2006. 2012, you released the single Seasons Will Change, and you know it's my personal favorite. I love it. Yes, um, yes. And you brought it back out when you formed Dukes of the Orient in 2017. First, thank you again for bringing that song back to the light. And what was the inspiration for you to actually form Dukes of the Orient? Because you're already doing the Asia thing. So, yeah, um, I. Uh, it's funny, funny enough, myself, and at, at the time... Uh, when I got a keyboard player for my my Asia organization, um, it was a guy called Eric Norlander. Yes. And I went and did um, uh, a musical uh, that that I'd worked on with um, David Kirschenbaum, um, and it, it became quite successful in in uh, Vegas, which really stopped me touring. Asia FJP. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, Eric and I, Eric Norland and I actually fell out over it. And and I can understand how he felt uh, because he put all this work into to the band and we did some, we did quite a few shows. And, you know, two or three years disappears without, you know, a wink from the band. There wasn't time. Yeah. And then, I put out uh, a covers album and he, he didn't really agree with doing that. So um, I thought it would be a stopgap before we did a bona fide Asia album. So we parted our ways and, um, it, you know, it wasn't terribly unpleasant, but it just things weren't where we were as friends. Mm-hmm. So um, time comes back. I go back out on the road uh, with... Asia FJP, and uh, I I wanted to work with Eric again, but I wanted to work um, in a kind of more keyboard-driven way that wasn't exactly like uh, Asia FJP. We'd had those songs that we'd written for Asia FJP mm-hmm. um, before, so I said, "Come on, let's let's start a new band, get these songs out, and let's write some more." And currently, we're actually in the studio now with, uh, from scratch, um, the, the next album from uh, Dukes of the Orient. Oh my, where do you so, find the time to do all this? I just don't uh, know. I, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, I, sometimes I, I have it hard to say, to say no to stuff. I know that, you know, we've, we've got, you know, Fox, Foxwoods, then... Uh, um, Vegas, and then I do uh, a one-off charity show in Memphis for um, the sadly departed it's a charity for the Survivor Singer. Oh, wow. um, oh. And so I go off at 4 a.m. the next morning after that show, and then we've just got back now from Florida where we did a corporate show and then in between that, I'm recording. But uh, it it is it is a busy life. I've even got more things in the planning. You know, we will uh, do um, another Asia FJP album. Wow. You know, I'm going to finish this um, album for Frontiers, which is number two for Frontiers for Dukes of the Orient. Perfect. And, you know, the rest of the time I've been building this studio here, which is a full operational... 80 channel analog studio with all all outboard gear and 100 microphones and a grand piano and wow. a 30 foot ceilings in the live room it's oh. it's great so it must um, be amazing that you get to stay there which is is very cool I know it is and I'm in this beautiful gated area in Las Vegas which is not the prettiest um, landscape but where I am it's, there's underground streams and aquifer so it's this green oasis wow. that um has been here for um millions of years and and created this this special place there's even horse stables here wow. and a big park next to it nice um, very unusual so right it is very unusual so but yeah time time is is one thing that we really don't have a lot of, especially you start advancing in years and you go, 
what, what, you know, am I really this old? Oh, <laughs> but, it's like, but, you know, the cool thing is, though, John, I mean, you could be doing nothing, but you're so busy. Your, your schedule is completely filled. And, you know, how many artists want to be able to say that at this stage, right? I know it's, it's very, very um, hard to, to, for people to keep up a career more than, you know, they have the album, does well, and then the band splits up. And I've been extremely fortunate to continue, but I've always been a very driven person. You know, from, you know if, when one thing finishes, I'll, I'll be up and starting a new thing. And, you know, I'm really lucky that, that, that um, I get these guys to work with us, you know, from, from Greg Rowley through to Lou Graham, Steve or Jerry, um, Tony Lewis, all these people to work for, with us in the rock pack. And I'm so pleased that, that, you know, Lou Graham has decided that to come, even though he's, he's retired from full time gigging is, is that, um, other than the odd foreigner gig, the only way you'll get to see Lou is, is, is with us. Yeah, John, how did that whole connection happen? Because Lou announces his retirement, and I think just before that, you guys had announced that you were going on the road together. Now, I know that Lou is an icon of yours, like many of us, right? So yeah. tell us about the first time you met Lou and then the first time you performed with him. What was that all like? Um, the first time I met Lou was some time in the in the, I'd, I'd been a huge fan. I even saw the jukebox uh, hero tour at Wembley Stadium where they had the great inflated jukebox. Oh my! And I, I don't even remember what year that was, but I've been a huge Lou fan. You know, for me, um, this kind of three singers that three or four singers that I really influenced me and Lou Paul Rogers and Ronnie James Dio mm -hmm. are three of those uh, and and obviously Steve Perry as well I wouldn't say exactly influenced me but Steve Perry was someone that I admired because I, I can't sing anything like Steve Perry oh, wow uh, um so you have uh, a beautiful voice, by the way. I've said it to you before, oh, and and you really do. You really do. Yeah, well, that's because you know I've explained to you before. We have the the guy under the stage, and I just mime. Um, oh, so it's the whole voice tracking thing, right? Yes, the voice tracking thing. Yeah, <laughs> I, Brit, Britney Spears taught me that. <laughs> um, but uh, with Lou, you know, I I, I met him at a, on a radio tour, and he was very nice. It was. It was him and him and Mick doing the same in Germany. And um, when I did my show here in Vegas, uh, which was the story of rock and roll, and we, we did a couple of foreigner songs, I decided to reach out to Lou um, and ask him, would he do a week's residency here, um, sing three or four songs, and uh, perform with us. Every, you know, every night for just over a week. And so Lou came along and I spent time talking with him. And wow. you know, I, I bumped into him occasionally on the road on the bill, but really didn't get much chance to chat with him. So over the course of about 10 days, we spent a lot of time at lunch and dinner talking. And he told me, his, you know, uh, his whole story of getting sick, getting better than getting sick again. Um, with a couple of brain tumors. Right. And it was amazing that this guy I know. Got, him, got himself back on his feet and I know. went out touring. You know, he put on weight with the steroids and all that stuff in, when, it, when he first had the treatment. But um, I'm, I'm glad to say that Lou's looking healthier and healthier and healthier yeah. every time I see him. So, you know, it gave, I had a great insight to the man himself during that time period. And I remember we got a, a gospel choir from a gospel church in, in Vegas. And it, it didn't, you, you get so busy putting these things together. Right. You don't kind of sometimes realize the enormity of it. And uh, it was, uh, we started 
I want to know what love is. And I'm playing bass standing next to Lou. And the first chorus comes and the, the, the choir, uh, which are about 40 gospel singers, went into the, to the chorus. And I just had this kind of almost like an epiphany, but this this huge, overwhelmed feeling. And I started, tears started running down my face. And I looked to Lou, and, you know, he's there singing his heart out. And I'm on stage with someone I, I admired and looked up to and influenced me so much as a singer and a songwriter and all the stuff that he'd been through. Um, and it, it was kind of a powerful, magical moment. So spinning forward now, you know, we we got Lou into doing now the the rock pack and we've done many shows with him. And then he was talking about, well, you know, I, I, I think I'm not going to do the band thing anymore. I, I don't want to do treks around the country doing 90-minute shows and all this stuff. You know, I, I, I was thinking about retiring. And I said to him, well, don't retire. Your, your voice is just getting stronger and stronger right. again. Right. And he goes, I said, well, I have an idea. And I said, well, why don't you do a show with us and we'll do 45 minutes of Asia and then we'll come on, you'll come on and we'll do 45 minutes of Foreigner and solo stuff. And sounds like Midnight Blue. And, and uh, he said, let me have a think about that. And then a couple of days later, he, he called up and said, yeah, no, this, is, this, this works. Wow. And, uh, you know, I'm so pleased that I get to, to do quite a few shows with him. And uh, as a person, he's, he's become a good friend. Um, I, I, I put him in contact as recently with um, Alan Parsons. Oh, my and, gosh. Uh, I love the new song. I can't even take it. Isn't it great? Oh, my gosh. Seriously. Uh, <laughs> Jeff it's... Coleman got hold of me and said, Alan, Alan was asking, can you get hold of Lou? And I sent the song to Lou, didn't hear anything. And Alan, I said, Alan, I'm real sorry. He, he's not, um, he's just not got back to me. I don't want to bug him, but I've asked him. And then uh, Alan goes, well, I've got till the 14th of November or whatever date it was to deliver the record. Because he's on Frontier, Frontiers as well. And I got this call from Lou, and he goes, Paul Allen, I, I want to sing it. Oh, my God. And so the two of them got together, and they came up with with uh, that, which sounds amazing. So you you are responsible for that song. You are responsible Partially. for I, you know, that. I'm, I'm, I'm one small link in the chain. but uh, You're um, a pretty big link. <laughs> I, I'm glad to, glad to have been somewhat involved, you know. That is so cool, John. Really. I have to say, you were, when you were just telling the story about when you sang on stage with Lou for the first time and tears were coming down your face, I'm standing here saying, oh, my!" the feeling that came across me, what a feeling that must have been for you. I cannot even imagine. Yeah, I mean, it was a magical moment because, you know, we, you, you get so stuck in when something really starts to happen. You haven't got time to actually stand there and actually take on what's actually happening. Sometimes until afterwards, sometimes never at all. Right. And and I'm there on stage. It's it's Lou Grant. It's I want to know what love is. It's a gospel choir. It's one of the finest rock singers of all all time. All time. <laughs> and uh, it was just. Just, I don't know, a spiritual moment, I would say. Oh, sure. And then to have the choir there on top of it. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy, indeed, yeah. Oh. You originated the Rock Pack in 2014, and you've had Robin Zander from Cheap Trick. Now you've yeah. got Tony Lewis from The Outfield, Steve Argeri yeah. from Journey, Lou Graham. Yeah. I mean, how much fun has the Rock Pack been for you, John? Uh, it's been great. We had Steve Walsh. As well, just before he retired, and doing "Carry On My Wayward Son," oh. 
point of no return. Gosh. Um, dust in the wind. Um, you know, I just Greg Rowley as well from Santana, and I got to play guitar on 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 the Santana songs oh. because everyone knows the band that I absolutely love Santana and that I learned all the Santana songs. Wow. You know, as a kid. So um, it was it, it was great to do that. And Greg's such a nice guy and a, a great performer as well. And you guys are so, friends, right? You, I mean, you have yes. a good relationship with each other. Yes. And that's really been the, the whole thing with with the Rock Pack. There there really been people that I've worked with over the years. Um, and uh, it's great that, you know, I don't have to go through an agent and all this kind of stuff to get to them. Right. I can actually go to them and say, do you want to do this? You know, obviously there's managers involved afterwards and everything, but, um, you know, it's, it's really nice to, to do that. And the, and the more this gathers pace, the more res- respect the project gets. And people know if Robin or, or Lou or Tony Lewis or, whoever these guys have, have done it, that, that they know it's going to be pretty together. The band's amazing. Um, my players are just incredible. Yes. And we're all friends. You know, it's one of these these things that decided that really this time of life is, is it's all about enjoying it. Okay. And, and if you can show people that you're enjoying it, 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 it becomes infectious. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and you guys, I mean, you always look like you're having just a blast up there. And how could you not be? You're doing what you love. You're having fun. You're entertaining people. It's just the best of everything. Yeah. Uh, as, as you know, even even my lawyer flies to some gigs. I know. And we, and we, <laughs> we all have fun before, well, so at the show and after. How cool is know? that? Yeah. Now, Tony, Lu- pretty cool. Tony Lewis from the outfield, he's a new addition to the Rock Pack. Yes. How have fans been reacting to him? Because all of a sudden, here's Tony Lewis again, which is great. Oh, my God. We, we toured with Tony in a, in a package in the early 2000s, I think. And it was Asia, Outfield, um, Berlin, uh, and a uh, flock of seagulls. Oh, it come like on. The tour. Wow. And it was a lot of different bands, and and um, I got back in contact with him, and now uh, we've done one show, uh, no two shows, and um, you know it's 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 so so good um, having him in the band. He's got an incredibly great sense of humor. Yeah, real real down to earth, nice guy. Yeah. And uh, me and him joke all the time because we we grew up we're, the, we're around the same age. We grew up, this, you know, on Monty Python and stuff like that. Oh, jeez! So, <laughs> oh gosh, like a couple of giggling kids. <laughs> and Tony's wife goes to him and said, "You find him funny?" And I go, "Yeah." And we're like giggling. She goes, "I don't." <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is great. So, um, yeah, it's 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 really it's really cool, and his voice is stunning. Yeah, his voice is no different than the record, and you'd think, man, that's if that's a young man's voice. Yeah, that's so high. That's not, um, you know, that's not someone older being able to sing that. You know, people change the keys and all stuff like that, but right. no, he's. He is spot on. Yeah, I've watched some videos of, you know, recent events that he's done. I'm like, holy crow. He sounds great. And the crowd loves him. Of course. And it's his first gigs where he's not been there playing bass. Oh. I I play bass on those songs and he just sings. That's right, because he actually, when I interviewed him, he talked about that. And he's like, oh, I hope John maybe lets me play bass. I said, well, just ask him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny you said that. Yeah. No, he's, he's a nice chap. 
So now the whole Rock Pack experience, give us a crazy time, like if a fan went bananas over somebody that was in the show. Maybe they ran on stage and just threw you guys all off. Give us give us well, something we, good. we had actually one person that um, Steve Walsh had warned us that this person will try and get to the gig and get tickets and and say say all this stuff and and um, I don't want her at the shows even so I'm like okay um, we can sort that out Steve you know it's not not too much problem and it, it turned out that we did this one show and uh, at you I did this one show and um she found a way to the dressing room. Stop it. And Steve was going crazy. Oh, no. And then she was like in the dressing room, drinking some wine and, and eating some of the band food. And it's like, wow. how the hell did she get in here? Oh, she's a music journalist. No, she isn't. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, you got to give yeah. her credit for getting in, though. She did a good job. <laughs> But um, no, Steve was nonplussed, as they say. Oh, not very happy. My, what, um, what, did he yell at her or something? No, he was like he disappeared as <laughs> as uh, a rat up a drainpipe, as they say. <laughs> was she like a stalker of his? Yeah. Oh, jeez. So, um, kind of, you know, anybody in any any career, be they a book writer, be they you know, you get a certain amount of notoriety. You're going to have a few fruitcakes following you around. True, true. Um, I had one one girl who uh, found my recording studio in Wales and hid in the garden shed for a day. Stop it. Um, who, poor thing, was as mad as a fish. <laughs> oh, no. And well, the police escorted her away. And the next day, she was found in the middle of a roundabout in Wales, stark naked. Oh. Well, geez, John, you know how to pick them. <laughs> but, uh, oh, it's, my gosh. It's, it's part of, the, part, of the, the, part of the life's rich touring pageant that these things happen. Wow. Um, yeah, but do you get a lot of that now or no? Not too much. No, I mean, no. I mean, uh, the uh, the thing is is that uh, you know we're not we're not in our early twenties anymore or or um, as in my case when I joined the band in my early thirties and you know the fans fans have grown with us and we we have a really cool cool following we we don't really get that we got a lot of people that we kind of know now because you know I've I've known a lot of these people for over 20, 20 years you know yeah so um, it's it's kind of kind of nice now that that you can do a show and you know you're going to recognize some of the people there and talk to the people afterwards you know I, I always they, you know even if there is a pre-show meet and greet I nearly always go out after the show and chat with people and, uh, uh, you know, sit on the merch stand and, and talk and talk to people as they come by. So, yeah, that's so cool. That's so cool. But yeah. you know what? I mean, that's what fans are there for. And just to get that little connection with them, they're happy. They came to see you. And I love that. You know, it's it just makes so much sense. I do too, because you know it's 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 not the days where you know as I said things have changed. You don't need much security and all and all that stuff. So it's it's kind of we're, we're all um, we're all uh, a little a little bit more sedentary than we were. Um, although I try and hop about on stage as much as I can. Yes, you do, and um, you you do I, run around with your guitar. I do run around. <laughs> and uh, but uh, it, it's 
it's it's just actually nice to talk to people and and get their input of what songs they've liked and you know how, so you get really great stories how some people have been through bad times and the music has has helped heal them or or helped you know in some way to give them to give them you know um a little bit of joy in some hard times so absolutely i was um, just going to say the stories must be probably the biggest takeaway for you when you talk to fans i think so i think so and um you know i always say a little a little prayer before i do a show and it's basically can we all play well can we have a good time and can the audience have a good time as well right there's nothing worse than going away from a show if you've not given 110% or you know it's it's been a very sedate audience or you're playing to the wrong crowd or some you know the, neg- the negativity of, of, a, of a show if any and that's sad very heavily, so. that, would, that would be sad if there's neg- you're at a show have fun let's go <laughs> I know I know and um, I you know I must say that that uh, you know it it really is a rarity that that we don't come off stage, you know, as as high as anybody in in the audience, um, and that that adrenaline and that that rush of playing for people, I don't think will ever leave, leave me. Oh, absolutely! You can see you can see that, and you can sense it from you. And you know the whole coolness factor about you. I just sense a tremendous amount of loyalty between you and everyone you work with. You have a tight bond. You have respect for everybody. I mean, I love the fact that you all just admire each other from your singers, Kelly and Carolyn, Steve or Jerry, your band members, Moni, Jeff, Johnny, Jamie. What keeps that bond so tight between all of you over all of these years? I don't know, really. It's just that, you know, we all rehearse at my, my house here. We all go out as friends. You know, these are guys that I would want to be friendly with, whether I was in a band with them or not. And I think, you know, finding these guys, I was really careful that uh, I wasn't just going for an incredible musician. I was going for an incredible musician with integrity and personality and friendship. And, you know, my uh, Jamie and... Johnny and Carolyn and Kelly, they they live very near me. And just the other day, you'll see these new these new pants, as you call them, trousers. <laughs> trousers. I've got these cool trousers, which are black with laces with a red flare. Oh, sweet! And um, Carolyn made them for me. No, I was like, I said to her, "They're amazing. What do they cost? How much?" She goes, "Oh, don't be silly. I made them for you." Oh, that's so sweet. That's the kind of people, that, you know, to, that I'm around. Yeah. And the same goes, you know, with with Lee, who you know very well. He's oh, like such a nice man. He's such been my nice best man. friend for years. And, yeah. and when he started, you know, being my manager, manager stroke business partner, we both said, look, this has got to be fun. There's only, if it's not fun, whether we're making money or not, it doesn't matter. Right. We have to enjoy this. And Lee comes out to every show and, you know, we speak every single day. Do you really? Oh, yeah. We we have 30 minutes or more conversation every single day on, on Skype. Wow. Wow. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's a full-time job looking after all these things, the records side of it, the merchandise, the uh, booking the shows, yeah. dealing with the agents, yeah, all the flights and and you know it's 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 a really neat team of people. Yeah, you're very fortunate, John. Really, really. Oh yeah. Good karma. Lots of good karma around you. Yeah, there is. There is, and, and you know, feeling that good karma is is is, is wonderful. Yeah. And I do have to ask you, I've been loving asking this question because everybody gives such a different answer. So you've been in the business a very, very long time. What is the one thing that you feel helped you get your success and what has helped make you keep it? 
I think very early on, um, there was um, a pr producer um, called Alan Shaglock, and he lived in the same town as me, and he came to a couple of my shows with a band I had called Moonstone, which was a little rock band. And he approached me and said, I'm working with this singer and um, I'm looking for some backing singers for him. I have a, a guy called John Parr who's doing backing vocals and a, and a, and a girl singer. I'm looking for, for one other guy with a rock voice. Um, would you come up to Rack Studios, which is a very famous studio in North, North London near Regent's Park, and uh, I, I'll have some work for you. So I, I knew he'd, he'd produced The Alarm and uh, he'd done that song 68 Guns with him, which was a big hit, and was a great record producer. So uh, I went up to London on the train, went to the studio, and and... I walk in the studio and Alan Shatler goes, uh, John Payne, uh, uh, this is Roger Daltrey. Um, uh, 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 like, and I was uh, like a stunned mullet. Oh my God. So um, I got to sing backups for Roger on, on, on two albums, I believe. I'm sweating right now. What? <laughs> and um, then I became the Who's manager, Bill Kirby, who was one of the most powerful men in the music industry after then managed me as a solo artist. So it really, really kick-started my wow. career from, you know, just playing in in local pubs and supporting a few name acts at, at, at big venues, but doing this and then singing backing vocals on Under a Raging Moon album. Do you think that saying yes to everything is part of it? It is a very, you know... Um, there's been very few times where I've been hesitant that, 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 that I, I take on a lot of work. You know, I'm, I'm very active as a recording engineer and producer and have been having owned many studios over the years and worked on many, many albums. But um, with, with, with all, of, all of I do musically, it's always been... Um, you know, not to be intimidated by something big and actually trying to push the envelope every single time to try and improve and get better. I'm still trying to improve my voice. I'm still trying to improve my songwriting, you know, and I'm very lucky at my age that, that my voice hasn't deteriorated. Well, you um, sound amazing. You do. It's, it's um, but I think working so much it's like a runner that I've never stopped running right so that's that's the thing and, and if anything goes wrong um, and I remember uh, I was a session guitarist as well and I worked with Elaine Page if you, if you remember who she is don't cry for me Argentina oh my goodness <laughs> she, she so I was a guitarist in her band uh, uh, for we went to a recording studio um, and I'd been working with them for a while and um, all the sheet music came out, but I'd heard the song the night before and I don't read music fast. I do read it, but like a snail. <laughs> and um, the guys are talking to me going, this is not the same song. Oh, they sent us the wrong song oh. <laughs> last night. This is what you got to play. And I sat there like like another stunned mullet thinking, oh, God. And she came over to me and goes, you don't read music, do you? And I went, well, she goes, out. You're fired. No. <laughs> yeah. So I remember getting fired, fired from that, and that was a bad, bad feeling. Now, John, you were in Trinidad this past weekend with the Rock Pack for a big Mother's yeah. Day extravaganza. Now, you've been there many times before. Tell us what it's like to perform at this beautifully exotic place. I mean, it looks amazing. It is. It's wonderful. The people are wonderful. Cult culturally, um, it's an interest. What surprised me was I'm, I'm a big foodie. The good thing, you know, about Trinidad, which, which surprised me, 
was uh, being a foodie is is the culture I expected it to be West Indian, and it was, but it was also mixed with Asian Indian. So I think forty percent Asian Indian, forty percent West Indian, and twenty percent is a mix of the two. I mean, they're all Trinidadians, and I, you know, I, I knew of Trinidad in England because there were a lot of cricket players that, that came from Trinidad and is a very, very famous um, cricket team. So, um, but, but playing there is great. The, the audiences just want to party and have fun. <laughs> it's a tropical island. Yeah. As I said, the food is amazing. The, um, the fun thing uh, about the show is, is, is it's always on island time. Oh. I remember, uh, remember we, uh, the time before we played, we had Greg Rowley with us. And oh, nice. I turn up and I said, where's Greg's um, Hammond? Hammond, you know, yeah. Greg's known for his Hammond playing. Man, well, not the problem, man. Thing, this will be here tomorrow. Tomorrow. I said, well, the gigs today. <laughs> oh, it's no problem. We have a Macaw Wave station, and I went. He'll go crazy. Oh no, you don't want the Hammond thing. Oh, it's all. It's made in 1965. Oh, <laughs> that's what he wants. Oh my gosh! And you know, it, uh, they change their mind sometimes of where the venue is and really? the start time and all that. It's it's just island time. Yeah, you just and it, go with it. You just go with it because I was getting up tight about it and, and I'm not a very timely person. And uh, as soon as you learn to let go, yeah, all of a sudden it's, oh, this is cool. <laughs> this, is, this is fine. Oh. And it, it always comes right in the end and you have a great time and the very warm people and it's um, it's a beautiful place. It must it's be tough to island. leave there, though. Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, I really wanted to go and visit Tobago. So there's Trinidad and Tobago. And Tobago is more the the sandy desert island tourist place. Um, and, I, you know, I'm not big for sitting on the beach in any case, but I would like to visit Tobago. But uh, where we are in, in Port of Spain... Is is it's great and it's and every time we go to Trinidad it's it's a blast. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you are coming. I can't believe I'm. I, I can't believe it. But you're coming to Foxwoods on Friday the seventeenth between on your doorstep. I've never played Foxwoods. Well, I think welcome. Probably because for many years we played Mohegan Sun, and I, they're not really that far from each other. Correct. Um. And they're the kind of competitive casinos, aren't they? Well, they are. But you know what? They both really put out some great entertainment. Big time. Big time. So, and you're included in that, which is very exciting. And everybody's already chatting. Oh, John Payne with Asia's coming. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Like, what? And uh, yes, he's coming. He's coming to Foxwood. So this is this is great for you guys. And again, I'm excited because that means you're going to be back again. So it's very, very cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's been a while since I've played in that area. And um, I have never, ever been to Foxwoods even. So. But you don't gamble, um, do you? You're not because you live in no, Vegas. I you live know. in Vegas. <laughs> I live in Vegas and I don't gamble at all. I do. Uh, I'm in the music industry. Right. <laughs> that's the biggest, yeah, there you go. Biggest gamble anyone can ever do. You build a recording studio. There's your gambling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, that's. My, I'm, you know, I love the equipment. I'm, it, this is my, and I'm sitting in my studio now. This is my little uh, t- um, toy store. Your haven. <laughs> your John Payne haven. <laughs> well, John, thank you so much. Everyone is completely pumped about seeing you at Foxwoods on the 17th. It's it's so great that you're going to be here. And I totally look forward to seeing you and Lou Graham in Vegas. Cool. Thank you so much.